Today, the reason we're here, and I want to thank you all for coming, is um, we're going to do an heirloom tomato tasting today. Now this is to kick off our salute to our local farmers in New Jersey. It's a week-long event that we do here at Mirabella Cafe. We'll be featuring four courses for $35 using all the beautiful bounty, uh, beautiful vegetables that we get from the New Jersey local farms. But today what we're going to highlight is the heirloom tomatoes. Now, the heirloom tomatoes are all different shapes and sizes, different colors. They're not the tomatoes that you usually see in the supermarket. These are God's tomato. These are the tomatoes that our grandparents were eating before World War II, before we started genetically changing our tomatoes. We started changing them so that they were firm skinned, uh, so that they can go into boxes and be packed and shipped across the country. Heirloom tomatoes are very delicate. They don't have the firm skin that, that, we've, that we've created. I, I heard about a tomato in California a couple years ago that we created uh, that will sit six months on a supermarket shelf without going bad. Do you want to try that tomato in its fourth month? I don't think I do either. Heirloom tomatoes last just a few days. We get them from our farmers uh, every couple of days. And um, there's over 200 different varieties. And each one's got its own different flavor. And to do an heirloom tomato tasting is like doing a wine tasting. There's all different flavor profiles that are absolutely incredible. Um, and truth, truthfully, I, I have a hard time eating tomatoes the rest of the year after the season's over and we can't get them anymore. I'm gonna show you a little bit of, I've got about 12 different, 15 different varieties here. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk about them a little bit and our chefs are preparing, uh, preparing them a few different ways and you're gonna try them and see first what they look like and taste like on their own and then what we do with them afterwards. First one we're gonna do is a brandy wine. Brandy wine is one of the most popular and most common heirloom tomatoes. Now, they're, they're not the most difficult to grow. All right? Some heirloom tomatoes are very, very, very high maintenance. Um, we've got these little orange sun gold tomatoes here that are absolutely delicious, but if they get just a hint too much water or rain, they pop and they're done. They're actually grown in tunnels, so, uh, so to avoid that. Um, but the brandywine, brandywine is a rich, full-bodied tomato. It's very juicy, it's like a water balloon. You can get a little confused between a brandywine and a pineapple. This one's over here is a pineapple, and if they're not all ripened, sometimes they'll look very similar, and you have a hard time telling them apart. The pineapple is gonna have um, color variations going all the way through the tomato on the inside. The brandywines don't. The brandywines are red all the way through. This one over here is a Cherokee purple. When they come to uh, full ripeness, they'll get this, uh, this greenish purple color uh, going through it. You see this is all purple over here. Yeah. This is another delicious, meaty, full body tomato, almost a smoky flavor. What I'm going to do today is we're going to taste about 10 or 12 different ones and see the taste. When you do a tomato tasting, it's almost like doing a wine tasting. The different flavor profiles are incredible. Yeah, but i, I got to tell you, this, doesn't, this color doesn't look too appetizing. It looks like it's been sitting on the windowsill for way too long. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's what it's supposed to look like. Really? Yeah. Marty's going to uh, cut up some of the uh, brandy wine and pass them out to you. Brandy wines are the ones that are red all the way through. I right, just give a little slice of each one. And then we have the pineapples too. All right. This is the first picking. All right. The second one's even better. The third one's even better. The, these are going to be better than any tomatoes that we've been eating. But next week, they're absolutely incredible. Um, the flavor continues to grow each week that goes by. Castelludo Genovese. Castelludo Genovese is a very unique looking tomato. There's not a, a special flavor profile here. It's, it's a standard tomato flavor. It's just um, a nice texture because of the ridges and everything. Gives it a nice presentation on a plate. A little unusual too. This isn't one that you find grown at, at many of the farms. The Juan Flamme is, um, is another one. This is a solid orange color. It's a golf ball size. It's a nice tomato flavor. Um, this one is an old heirloom tomato that comes from the south of France. Now many of you have heard about the tomato scare that we just had, which actually turned out not to be much about tomatoes at all. And they're saying that they're jalapenos from uh, Mexico now. Jersey farmers are going to be quick to point out, and I knock on wood every time we do, that we haven't had a problem like that in New Jersey. I've interviewed over 50 local farmers in New Jersey, and I've got to tell you, the commitment that they have to giving you the absolute highest quality as far as flavor, um, safety is, I think, is unsurpassed. I've, I've met with the um, Secretary of Agriculture and his department from uh, New Jersey, Northeast Organic Farming Association, uh, Rutgers University, and it's amazing what goes into the raising of these, of these fruits and vegetables in New Jersey, it really is. Um, these guys are artisans, they're scientists, 
and their commitment is just absolutely incredible. They work so hard. They're out on the field 18 hours a day. I'm inviting these guys up for dinner all summer long and you know, to try to taste what we do with their, with their vegetables, and we can't get them off the field. Yeah, so I mean, I think it's, it's important to point that out, that we are very lucky that we have the system we have set up in New Jersey and these, these passionate farmers that we have that are committed to, uh, to bringing us the, the high quality that they do. This one here is a Jersey Devil. Uh, this one actually originated in New Jersey, and it's called the Jersey Devil because it looks like a devil's horns. It's very similar to a Roma, Roma tomato, a plum tomato. Um, originated in Jersey, and um, I guess that's the, it's, it's actually funny because it's, this, is, this tomato is not grown that much anymore. It's very rare, and you don't find it around a whole lot. Now, I want you to taste the tomatoes before we do anything with them. And then my chef's in the back are doing a couple preparations for you right now. What I'm cutting up right now is a persimmons tomato. A persimmons tomato is a solid yellow color on the outside and a solid yellow on the inside. Most of your yellow tomatoes are, are a mild flavored tomato, but this one actually is a little bit fruitier. I think this tastes very similar to a persimmons. How many people remember the Jersey tomato? Growing up, right? Okay, we used to go crazy. Um, the hoagie shops, the, the pizzerias all had the Jersey tomato on, the, on their sandwiches and you went crazy, right? And for a few months we were in heaven and then they disappeared again. The Jersey tomato is actually called Ramapo. I guess about 20 years ago, um, we had a company called Red Pack. Red Pack Tomatoes. Red Pack was based in New Jersey. Red Pack moved about 20 years ago. Well, Red Pack bought 80% of the tomatoes that were grown in New Jersey at that time. There was a lot of farmers growing tomatoes. It was a big business. Well, Red Pack packed up, and there was an initiative to, uh, to market that tomato. They said, you know what? Even though we're not going to be able to sell this to Red Pack anymore, we've got a great, great, great product. Let's try to sell this to the rest of the country, the rest of the world. And it didn't work out. So after a couple years, the farmers had to stop growing those tomatoes and start moving on to other products. And the Jersey tomato disappeared. It didn't disappear, but it seemed like it disappeared over the last few years. Last year, they couldn't even get the seeds. That seed is called Ramapo, and that tomato is going to be available in two weeks uh, from our farmer, and we're going to have that here at the restaurant. What the, uh, my server is going to be passing out to you now is a little bit of our caprese salad. Our caprese salad is our tomato with our homemade mozzarella. Um, we make the mozzarella here from scratch every day at Mirabella Cafe, and uh, every single day. So. It's already a really nice dish, but when the heirloom tomatoes come in, it makes it really special. Um, some of the tomatoes we just talked about, you're gonna try with that. A Little bit of olive oil, some fresh basil. The best thing about Italian food is its simplicity. We don't mask it with a million different flavors. We wanna taste, want taste what we're eating. These great, great products, we wanna taste them. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Warm, I guess that's supposed to be, not supposed to be No, I don't refrigerate any of my tomatoes. Um, especially the heirlooms. The, uh, it loses flavor. See, that tomato is still ripening, you know? And once you uh, refrigerate it, it just closes down all the flavor of it. And now uh, the tomatoes you're using here, uh, organic tomatoes? These are all organic, yes. They're coming from an organic farm in Williamstown, Muth Farm. Um, incredible farmer, Bob Muth and his wife Letta. Uh, 118 acres, completely sustainable, completely organic. A lot of restaurants um, in cities all over are getting together for restaurant weeks where we do a four course menu for $35. It was 30 before, but everything goes up, right? Um, $35 and people come in for the deal because they can get a $50, $60, $70 menu for $35. It's different with this, right? We noticed that last year when we were talking to our customers, they weren't there for the deal. They were there because we were using the local product and they loved the fact that we were supporting local farms. I had stories every single night, people telling me, I'm here because my father was a farmer. I'm here because my uncle, because I grew up on a farm, because my neighbor has a farm, because you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's a, I think it's an emotional cord there, you know? But besides that, it's health and nutrition too. Um, health, nutrition, and flavor. Why do you think that people in New Jersey have this love affair with the tomato, and, and what evidence have you seen of that over the years? Well, that Ramapo tomato that I was telling you about, the Jersey tomato that we all know and remember and love, um, has a very, had a very unique flavor. So, um, it's absolutely delicious. I think that's the one that is in everybody's mind from, you know, back in the day. Um, but evidence, evidence is what we had today. Evidence is this right here. It's, it's the taste. You taste it and it's like nothing else that you can get the rest of the year. Nothing.